この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディ、ウェルカムエブリワン、アイムティアブー、アンアイウォーズ、ルーディーアウェイクンディスモーニングバイデグラウンドシェイキング、アズエポテントエッグウェイクハペンドラダーニューミー、アンディフェルトライクディウォールドウェイクディ And way earlier than expected, I was bolted upright with a shot of adrenaline and like, uh, ah, and like throwing clothes on. And as the world shakes, I'm on the second floor of a building. So it's like, fuck, 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 fuck. If this is going to be a big one, I got to get downstairs and out of here. And I have to have clothes on because, ah, uh, do I grab shoes? I don't know. I'm not very well prepared, it seems. A rude awakening. And yet, I would take shit like that every fucking day over dealing with what Subaru dealt with in his last couple wake ups. Because that shit was bad. That shit was mind twistingly,、uh, world endingly bad. Maybe part of that things worse than death idea. I didn't really wrap my head around a lot of the events of the last couple episodes super well. So I'm really glad that I've had the time in between to talk to people on the Discord and watch comments filter in. And also the sort of unique opportunity to get more comments from YouTube peoples because I posted the videos up on YouTube、um, and didn't end up recording the next episode that day. To be clear, that wasn't my intent. My intent was to post them and then record them. But I felt really bad last week and ended up taking the entire week off. It's not Re Zero getting the harsh end of the stick, it's me having a harsh time. Struggling a little bit. Kind of in a similar way, in some ways, to the way that Subaru has struggled and we've seen him struggle in his past. But also just like exhausted, really tired, didn't feel very well, needed the time. Fine. The opportunity that it presents. Is to take the time to let those last couple of episodes sink in and to even go back and return to them and rewatch some elements that didn't make a lot of sense to me. So, I want to talk about a couple of those and do so in the format of a comment spotlight here at the beginning.、Um, I started this recording thinking that this might be all that I did as a recording, and it still might, depending on how long it takes, because the shit that we're handling is so. potent and yet happens so quickly that it kind of bowled me over and. I know that we won't be able to compute it and combobulate it entirely until we watch the next episodes and see where it lands, but I still am willing to take the time here in the interim to like discuss where we're at because we've just gotten to a place that actually is psychologically really interesting and also narratively really interesting. It's gotten more than I've been able to dig into really, and I don't know if I'll be able or have the capacity to dig into it super well right now, but I'm going to try. I've just talked about how cool and interesting this mystery is. I don't know, it feels like it keeps unpacking more stuff. And I've been a little bit confused about the nature of what's really going on in terms of the particular loops, who Amelia is at different points, and particularly what's going, about Ro- going on with Roswell there at the end. It just didn't make a lot of sense to me, and it has clicked. And so I'd like to share the clicking with you before we jump into the next episode so that we're all on the same page. Vibes, 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 vibes. Cool, cool, cool. Switch Official writes I always understood that last scene with Roswell as him understanding that Subaru is looping, but he doesn't understand the condition for Subaru to loop, which is to die, so he was beating him up trying to get him to restart to no avail. And KP, Kpop9305 writes Yeah, and ironically, killing him seems to be the last thing he wants to do, hence saying it might not be the smart way of doing, going about things while beating him up. For all he might know, Subaru dying might mean the end of the road. This is where I ran into trouble. I sort of felt like because Roswell had this like knowledge ethereally of the book and stuff, that he would know how return by death works, and so him beating him up felt needlessly cruel. It didn't compute for me for some reason that it didn't compute for Roswell for obvious reasons that RBD works the way that it does. He doesn't know that it's return by death. He probably thinks it's return by Subaru's choice whenever he decides to quick save, quick load, save point, respawn, you know? But it doesn't work that way. And so, what Roswell is trying to do is trying to force Subaru to be so miserable right now that he respawns so that we can get the reset and Roswell can reach his goals. And there's a cool self sacrifice element to it that's wired into that once it's comprehended from that element, which is as Roswell goes out and fights bunnies and gets devoured. 
He's saying, like, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter that I get to experience misery and death because another me will live on, even if I don't get to experience being that person. Which is really interesting because it reflects, mirrors, and colors Subaru's own experiences. Subaru very often doesn't want to do that. <laughs> and he gets to experience it, right? Like, he actually is the one who wakes up. It's not like, ah, ethereally, some other me will live on and carry on my dreams and goals and stuff, and I won't get to know it, but I'll believe in them. Which is much more in the vein of, like, a child or an offspring or, like, humanity as a whole or something like that. With Subaru, it's, it's actually him, and it's actually him going to wake up. So, Roswell demonstrates, perhaps, an admirable degree of dedication toward his goal. The kind of dedication that doesn't just pay lip service to the idea of he'd be willing to die for it, but actually represents it. And it's not just that he'd be willing to die for it so long as he gets reborn, it's that he believes that this is the thing which demonstrates his belief in the Gospels, and in the whole of whatever witchdom he's trying to pursue, but also a real dedication toward pursuing that thing. It doesn't matter to him if it's him or another him, and probably it wouldn't matter to him if it's him or somebody else as long as he could trust that person as much as he trusts himself. Of course, he's an ancient wizard dude, so he doesn't fucking trust anybody to that degree. And even if he did trust them, he probably doesn't believe that they had the skill and capacity. Like, he might trust Ram to that degree, but, like, can she do it? Probably not. And so he needs to be the one. Very interesting. Very potent emotionally and as a character writing element. But I didn't, I didn't clock it on the first watch. So that's just a, a, a demonstration of how I'm dumb sometimes. And also an episode that is like 26 minutes of the most mind-boggling <laughs> mindfuck content might cause me to miss some shit. Because I'm only human and sometimes barely. <laughs> some, sometimes I'm just a little guy. <laughs> so pretty often, actually. More often, more recently. Okay. There are a couple of really awesome comments around... Betty, Mr. Time Attacker's comment around Betty's struggle and how painful it is to watch how much pain she's in, it's pretty potent. So I recommend going and reading that, but I'm going to jump around a little bit and hop over to Johan Bauer's Full On Gamer's comment. Remember that discussion about perfect vessels? How does Satella manifest in the sanctuary? Clearly in her perfect vessel in the Gla Black Goop episode. Subaru isn't promising to save Satella. He's promising the Amelia flesh suit she wears. Yeah. Which has some weird meaning. The second time around, instead of possessed Amelia, we get full mind break Amelia, not possessed but something just as dark and terrible, in complete yandere cling beast mode, taking Subaru's dying breath in their first kiss. After, in the previous one, damn, saying I love you, which also rocked him. Beastmaster Melee, second hand to Elsa's mass murder squad, is fully revealed as the infiltrator that kicked off the doggo mauling. Yay! And Roswell admits to the early snow as the means to frame Amelia. The Great Rabbit is, as stated, drawn to the Great Mana, the Sorceress Snowfall, and once there, to Roswell himself. Subaru's mauling as he escapes the swarm is incidental while they have Roswell to feast on, letting him stagger away to the broken Amelia's delightful final embrace. And a kiss... That is, as the episode is titled, The Taste of Death. And finally, Fish Jelly writes, I love how episode 11 recontextualizes Beatrice's tsundere attitude so far. It's not just a quirk of hers. She's an incredibly sad person who tries to push others away because she just wants to die. She doesn't see the point in creating connections because she feels she doesn't need them. She only needs that person, or at least that's what she wants to believe. I am reminded of some other great tsundere who are not tsundere characters, some of whom are as light as air and just want to drift away. Yeah, there's something very potent about Beatrice. And on that, I'm wrong. It's not the last one that we'll do. We'll talk about Flying Eagle 3898's comment. 
Episode 11 is indeed one of the most difficult episodes to watch. It's pure horror. It seems like people have already said most things I would have, so I'll focus on one point, and thank you for doing so. Although never outright stated, it is strongly implied that what we ran into in episodes 9 and 10 was indeed Satella possessing Amelia. Evidence, Amelia's body was missing in the tomb when he woke up, despite being present every other time. However, we are seeing something quite different at the end of episode 11. In episodes 9 and 10, Satella says, Aishte, Aishteru, repeatedly. But in episode 11, it's Daisuke. Amelia has apparently been repeatedly challenging and failing the trial for two days straight, with zero emotional support. And this is the result. Broken. 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 Not Satella. But mind break. So which one's worse? Take your pick. Either way, it's not the person that you love anymore, is it? Alright, so with that, I am not going to do a drawing today. I just don't feel like it. I don't know what I would draw. Maybe it'll inspire me to draw something a little bit later, but it's not the vibe. Weird. <clears throat> uh, Shit. Nope, I have to. It is a duty, it is a promise that I made to myself that I would draw every video, so I'm going to draw. That's it. <laughs> That's the whole thing. It's the earthquake today, it's the fault line in the earth, and it's a divide in reality that feels so broken, and I don't know how to... <sighs> To guide it back together. That's where we've led to over the course of this season, I suppose, is like this sanctuary thing has led us repeatedly to a point where everything is broken and everything feels shattered. And, and like maybe we're on one side of this gap trying to get to the other, or maybe we're just trying not to fall into the, the pit. But it's uh, it's pretty dark down there, eh? Pretty scary, and it feels like it's tearing apart underneath us. Maybe we're... Yeah. Maybe we're Van Damming it. Ooh, but it's fucking spooky to Van Damme it like that, huh? Even if you're gonna point that finger to the sky... I don't know, Suba bro. Fives. Weird. It's funny, sometimes the silliest, most, like sketchy quick drawings are the ones that feel like they mean the most and that one came out of nowhere and suddenly it feels to me like it means a lot interesting okay we are cooking with gas i've got episode 12 of re-zero season 2 up and ready to go i've got custom subtitles for it provided by my lovely discord users who can drop what they changed in the comments as they've been doing which would be great and there are V2 subs for episode 13 if we get that far. I've been told that that would be ideal as if I could do 12 and 13, but I'm not going to push it. We're just going to take our time and zero with the Rees and uh, experience everything that this show has to offer right now. Thank you for coming along with me while I fiddle with my chair and figure out where I want to sit. Also, I have a chair. So weird. I'm so excited. Scared? Scare, scare sighted. Uh, uh, anxiety freaked. Uh... Happy, pleased, but also terrified. Thanks for joining me for that. It should be a fun time. Ah, what a weird show. Let's see how we handle this next set of loops, assuming that that really was the kiss of death and we're going to wake up again and have another shot at this. Hopefully, that's as bad as it gets, he says, thinking that probably that won't be as bad as it gets. <laughs> Not ready, not ready, not ready. Scared, 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 scared. That's okay. Two versions. Picture in picture in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep, beep, timer to count you down. Episode 12 of ReZero Season 2. A beep, beep, timer to count you down. Let's go. Fuck. We are awake. Okay, we're in the normal part of the struggle. Sorry about that noise, I'm not sure what that is. Hmm.
All right. He's just further reaffirmed. Love it. He's got some of that spine and dedication, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, I'm so glad to have watched this. Yes, he is. Right. Right. His need, his desire, right? <sighs> we'll see. What a classic, like... Turn to you again? Satella? Uh, I'm sorry, that's who I meant. I don't know why I said Satella. <gasps> Let's go to the tea party! That's smart! I didn't th Oh shit, it's an option apparently. Maybe not a good one. But we escape. Huh? Who said that? Oh, fuck. Behold an unthinkable present. When is this? This is way... This is when... Yeah, because this didn't happen. This didn't happen. This is when he... Was he able to... Whoa. Did he kill himself over finding out that... That, um... That Ram was... Whoa. So he's watching the... The repercussions and what it would do to Amelia and everyone else. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, and now you abandon me, and now you abandon me. Oh yeah, not a good, not a good look, bro. Is that a real reality that still exists? Or does it, does that Amelia still have to actually like exist in that? Well, that's a repercussion. Oh, we just gonna do it again and again. Is this where he killed him? Huh. How many of these... How many times have we died? It's gonna be all of them, isn't it? It's his own voice saying that to him. Fuck. Yeah, the jump. It's all the suicide times or all the chosen times, especially. Like, not the, like, accidental got eaten by something oopsie oopsies, but, like, how does this tear apart everybody when you do it? But then, are these realities real? Do they remain? Because if they don't remain, then this is all garbage bullshit that's just psychological torment. 
But if they remain and those realities continue on without him, then he's creating real torment for people. Ah, this is cool. Oh. Not quite a suicide time. Whoa. Whoa. Reinhard. To fight. And so I will destroy. A world where Puck gets killed by Reinhard. All these terrible realities. Oh, he's so broken. Oh, we are going all the way back. To the beginning. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, there, there she is helping. Death, death, death. All the things that you've left behind. Nice, and we, th we withheld enough to make it fucking hurt. Sick! This is cool. Hey, uh, Echidna? Um. Huh? Huh? What? What? He go mind break? Gone gone? What's this? What the fuck? That's so cute and not real. There's no fuck a what the fuck? I'm so scared of what this actually is. Oh, you've done so much, you ding dong. Ah! All the weight on himself, just like we talked about. So much. Taking that responsibility too far. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Through time and space and through psychological torment. She's able to speak to him. You don't need answers, love. Yeah. Ah, true. Not alone, not alone, not alone. I don't trust this! It's so freaky! What the hell? I mean, I love that. That's super cute. But what the fuck? Uh... Yeah, you wouldn't... You wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say that. Yeah, you're fucking spooking creeping on me, you bitch! Yeah, but you're not here. You're not here. 
Yeah. Time to, for you to fight again. You wouldn't tell me to go, go back to sleep and not work. Ah, that's not how we work. It's fucking sick. But you wouldn't do that. You hold me to the highest standard. I don't know, Ram doesn't go very easy on you either. Holy shit. Nope, you're not real. You're a liar. Sick. I, he can't. Hmm. Are you one of the witches? What are you? What the fuck? <laughs> you are one of the witches. Why are you here? And she's all she's all nervous. She's all nervous because he's the opposite of lusty. She not have control of that? Oh, always seen as the object of beauty. <laughs> Why is that happening? Oh, he's leaving the pagoda. He's leaving the, the space. Oh, yeah, why? That seems like fucked up. Oh, wait, actually? Ah, you could have warned us. All right, we're here, we're here, we're here. God, that was so fucked up, dude. Why did it have to be so mean, though? Oh, I was trying to save you. Okay, that was the trial? <laughs> so cute. No rage. All right, let's talk. No rage. Yeah. Yeah, but are they real? But it's an unreality. Huh. Oh, fuck, it's uncertain. That's such... Oh, that's the only way to do it. You ass. You ass, writer guy. Dick, though. Dick, though. Yeah. Because it becomes... Possible. And so you have to treat it like it's real. You have to treat it like it's... Like, it, and that's a real one of those people that you care about every time. Fuck! I'm sorry for talking over the show. I'm trying to pay attention as much as I can, but, like, so many cool banger things are being dropped. <laughs> already have one with Roswell. Ooh. Do we give up the opportunity to make contracts with other people? Can we ask us for a second opinion? Wait, well, what do we give up? Whoa, what? You can what? That seems like... Yeah, that seems very valuable to you. 
Yeah, lay, lay it out. Lay it out there. Tell us everything. You're not going to know what you're agreeing to. You got to know what you... Oh my god, she seems real enthusiastic, man. Yeah, maybe we should talk about it a little bit more. <laughs> you got to drink her piss. Could we learn this bit and then do it on Beatrice instead? Or something crazy? Whoa! Oh, the other ones want to butt in. Okay. I think I'm gonna fight for his dick. <laughs> yeah, they are! Jealous isn't part of her title. Oh god. Are the other ones gonna pop up too? Crab lady? Yeah. Oh. Everything pisses you off. Yeah, tell us all the other parts. Give us the other opinions. Yeah, we need that information. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, what did we lose? Ah, but of course you would say that. You're the salesperson. What does that mean, exactly? But... So, why don't you tell us what is not told? Yeah, what's she obfuscating or not telling us, though? What does her taking a taste make us lose, though? No, listen, listen, listen to everybody! Get the other ones in here, get the other ones in here, let's get a whole family gathering! Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! I've heard your pitch! I've heard your pitch, Echidna! Thank you! Who are you? Yow! Praise! Absolutely fucking praise! God, she keeps sighing. Woof. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> Horrifying. You're here anyway. I love Sekhmet. <laughs> God damn. Ah. Ah, the least pain. Huh. Oh. Not the best possible path. You don't get to choose. All right, show us. It sure is tremendous. That's why you want it. That's why you want it. All you want, but that's what the trial just showed us. We're building... We're building up a rejection. 
We're building up to him choosing his own way. To go through without a roadmap. Like, unlike the, the gospel wielders. For her own curiosity, which is fine. All this whispering in the background, this is crazy. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Double hot. <laughs> But all the more reason, I don't think he's going to take it. But the fact, the fact that you can give it all makes it not real. Awesome cut. I can tell you are so greedy for him. Oh, you'll do it even if I don't form a contract? <laughs> what a speech! I need it. Need the answer. Well, she's gone off on her thing. Everybody saw that, right? Everybody watched that happen? We all saw that crazy shit, right? At least it's out there in the open, and it's pretty alright. I mean, if you, you can negotiate that kind of shit, it's fine. Let's see. Let's see what he does. I don't know. I got no, I got no ability to predict. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good man. Huh? <laughs> of course you don't. You can't see. Ah. <sighs> She just wants to learn. She just wants to learn. She's a total psychopath. Ah! Ah, uh oh. Okay, hold on. Yeah, let's chill. Okay. All right. Hmm. Oh, it's you, bro. What if it's not you? Ah! You bitch! Oh, shit, never mind. Oh, that's so fucked up. But she could have chosen someone at any point, but it's her. Her own choices. I feel like she doesn't. What do you mean feel about it? <laughs> 
You get to learn so much! <laughs> yeah, it finally sinks in! Yeah, they all are! Real girl only, please. Not even the real girl, the Beatrice girl! Let's go! That's even better! That's the choice, man! That's sick! Uh-oh, we just pissed off Echidna. No! Mendona Kotono Mendo! Interesting. Hello? Hi, sis. Welcome to the tea party. Woof. Oh my fucking god, all the color- Ah! <laughs> okay. We got so few things to talk about. There's so much in this episode, it's so amazingly overwhelming. I don't care, we're just gonna move on to the next one super fast. Cause this is some balls. But we gotta mention a couple things cause they're amazing. I'll save them. I'll save them all. Fuck. Oh my god, the trial. Repeating all of the deaths. Starting with the suicides, right? Like all the moments that he's died for himself. Particularly the moments that he's chosen it and how that's rocked people. How it's destroyed Amelia in particular. We land this so well. And then how it tears apart the people that we know and care about. That we need them to be together. And we would hope that they would be together even after we died. And they're not. It's the opposite. They end up fighting each other and killing each other. The people we care about and respect end up killing each other. And it's enough. It's enough built up over time to smash this together really, really solidly. And who should show up but the impossible? She says everything we need to hear, except... Except she opens the floor to weakness in a way that she never would. And so he realizes that it's just a facsimile. Because he knows that what she would want from him is strength to go on. This is beautiful. Wonderfully done. It's such a cool... And powerful, like, recognition of character and, like, seeing of other person. I, it, it demonstrates that Subaru sees her so much and feels so seen by her because he's able to recognize when it's not her. And it is instead not malicious, but a little twisted and full of lies. Lies and at least, at least things obfuscated or withheld, ulterior motives not expressed, a contract that Echidna desperately wants. Why? Because she is greedy. Greedy enough that the other witches want to stop it. For their own reasons, they want the contract too. Subaru is powerful and worthwhile. Satella wants it too. Isn't getting there the best possible, it, to the best possible future, the resolution that you made? And she lapses into this space, and we do this awesome spinning shot around her as she floats into her own dreamy, grandiose, delusional reality. And invites him into it. It's got, it's got echoes of like... You go on two dates with a girl, and on date number three, she tells you about how amazing it's going to be when you have a house together and four kids, and what you're going to name all of them, and what your puppies are going to be named too, and how both of you are going to have cars, and one of them's going to be this color, and the other's going to be that color, and they're going to have this as a vanity license plate, and it's going to be so perfect, and you're going to have your mom, her mom is going to come and live with you, and it's going to be so perfect and so great, and you can't wait to be, it's like, oh shit. You're out of your mind. You're fully delusional. Because that's where we get to with Echidna. We've been interacting with her as though she's a person this whole time. Like, she's a little weird. She makes you drink piss and stuff, or whatever it is. But, uh, 
mostly we've been able to be on the level, be like, hey, we can be cool and vulnerable to you. And now the mask slips and falls. And she demonstrates exactly what she wants. To be someone who can give everything. But not for him. Because he's useful. Because she needs him. Because she needs everything. And so everything that you want is aligned with what I want. It's a good pitch in some ways. It tries to be at least a good sales pitch. But it's not what he wants. Because uh, a girl that's everything that you want her to be isn't something that you actually want. You don't want to build a bear. You want a person. And you don't want a god playing mortal for their own ends. You want a person. And so the setup in my mind is not you. Emilia is the one. But for a contract, there's another girl who's been tormented by a similar kind of using for a long, long time. One who's been waiting for a person who needs someone as well, but who's not going to bend herself or break herself in order to become something that she's not or put on a mask in order to be there. So this, Echidna, how broken of you. You're incapable of understanding how anyone else feels, and she can't even be wounded by that. Oh, that's where it is. This is one of those times when you could get angry, and that's when she says, she will, don't worry. But for now, let's discuss a little further. And we are, we refuse... And it feels like, narratively or like visually, it feels like that refusal is what allows Satella in here. But it's unclear. Why? Why force her to wait? Because the choice itself would be the choice to game. So to Subaru, it's like, how dare you? How dare you play with Beatrice, this innocence? emotions like that and use them like that but of course she dares she's monstrous beyond comprehension truly a witch okay awesome wrinkle to the whole return by death thing going to the tea party and finding out how much of a liar uh echidna is it's fucking wild and now we're face to face with the witch so let's move straight into the next one and see where the hell we're going see you in a sec all right, season two, episode 13. She just shows up. Let's see what happens. Beep, beep, timer. Hot. Spooky. Scary. Dead. Hot. She fucking loves you, dude. She ain't lying about it, neither. <sighs> Shit. Oh. Oh. Oh, brutal. It's kind of like Wilhelm. Oh, shit. Twisting to put all the all the weight on his own shoulders. For letting you return? For giving you the ability? Whoa. A reflection on you. Uh oh.
Mm, you were just shown that it, that's not true. How special I am. She just wants you to be better. That's why. She's trying to save you, man. She's just broken. Oh. Love. She does love you. Out of love. To keep you... Safe. Whoa. Oh, whoa. My brain has imploded. It can't be that way. It has to be you too. It can't be that way. You can't break yourself for everything like Roswell. You'll never be like him, right? You'll never be like him. And now he snaps back to it. If only I had reset and reset and reset and worked harder and harder and harder. Burden, burden, burden. It's me. It's my fault. Man, we break so hard in the psychic space. <gasps> Ow. Please don't turn me into split up, split up broken things again. Who will be judged? Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Opa. Yep. But here, man. Prevented and shattered. You got another fist? Let's go, Tifon. Whoa, get slothed on. Oh man, they're all at odds. They are not a united front at all. She's so hot. Hi Daphne. You gonna get involved as well? You just hungry. Ah! She doesn't know. She knows so little. Like, she intends so little of what she's doing. That's so interesting. It's so much less malicious than we expected. Ah! That's what cuts through again? Yeah, you can't help but hear the reality. You've been trying to avoid it this whole time. You've been listening only to the bad voices.
Oh, shit. With a healing headbutt. Oh. So that's why, because the trial lets us get to there. Choose to live for now. Find out what you can. Let's win. Let's win, dude. I don't know what it means. I don't know where it is, but like, there's a way. There's a way, man. You don't have to sacrifice yourself to save them. It's not zero sum. Light through the clouds. What light? Whose light? You allow it. In fact, you'll force it. How did we save Satella? How did we save her? What did we do? How did we save you? <laughs> Becoming Rem for that moment? So it's like all of the flip sides of all of the sins become useful. Even if he does... Ah, there's so much here that I cannot even com combobulate. Tearing my fucking hair out here. Each of them has contributed. And you... Yeah. No one contract. Yeah, y'all fucking weird. Stop being so mean to me. Hey, you're still here, man. You're still fighting. Can we address the sate the satella in the room? Mhm. Mm Knowledge, but Come back to make this choice again? Uh, yeah. Life. He could still choose either way, I have no idea. You'll sacrifice anyway. Maybe worse now that because you, you won't know that you'll get there. He has to know. A value of yourself beyond sacrifice. It's easy to live that way, isn't it? Ah, this hurts. This is too much. Greedy. <laughs> mm. 
That's really useful to know. Thank you for your meddling. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh boy. Mommy. Probably for the last time. Ah, oh, what a stop in the other world. Whoa, yeah. Both sides. Thanks for being willing to let me choose. Wow. And you? And you? Can he thank her? No, you're broken and twisted. He can turn and face and thank her too. Whoa. Can I use it sometimes, but not in the same way? <laughs> whoa 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 is that a contract forming I don't know that that is I don't think so it's important make the sacrifices but don't make them lightly push forward but not at the destruct not not to the the destruction of yourself fuck you show that's what i'm fucking talking about you just add that shit in you just add that shit in you just add that, that, that shit in to totally destroy me no you can't you can't say that that's not the same thing that she said that's not the thing that she said that you pro you promised her a different thing Holy fuckaroni. I want to just stop and die. <laughs> can I just, can I return my death to before I watch this episode? <laughs> just call it a one episode day and have a nice time and just chill the fuck out. No, no, I'm just gonna have my brain swoggled. Okay, okay, good. Thank you, Butrash, I love you. Why you fucking think, bro? Yeah, why you think Otto be trying to? Come on, man. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That's silly. <laughs> That's so silly. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, this is so fucking silly. Hanthony Baka. Got you. <laughs> so many, it must be nice to use. Yeah, that dragon fucking loves you, bro. Y'all, just instant cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Extreme timing to be like wholeheartedly embraced by a, by an ambimal at the like basest level. Oh, it's so real. Get a cat, get a dog. They'll love you for real. Fuck. Are we gonna have to watch these episodes again? I feel like we might have to watch these again. I'm gonna string myself with a headphone. I don't care. <laughs> Let me die. <laughs> Let me die. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's said that to you in this reality, so... Gah, maybe not. Looks like somebody else is working on that trial right now.
You said no. You haven't e eaten the piss. <laughs> you didn't drink the piss? You didn't take the piss? That means Amelia won't be there for you. Or you won't be there for Amelia. Hello, Roz G. Hi, I can do a thing. You know I can do a thing. No, we're not going to tell him that. Fuck. What are we doing? Nay. He does fully reveal it to him. Hey, buddy. Yeah, you're a fucked up little guy. Yeah, like you're a fucked up little guy. <laughs> nah. Son of a ding dong. That would be the way. But... Sacrifices. I don't know where it falls, man. It's so complicated. Please don't beat me up again. What? Uh... Oh, it ain't even begun yet. Hey, man. Ooh. Yeah, but... Oh. Oh. He believes. He got you. He's got the book, and it is his mansion. He sent the order? Ah, oh, fuck you, man. What the fuck? How does that clickety-clack at all? Is it to force Subaru's hand? What the shit? Why we gotta do this again? Yeah. To see more murders? So you're causing the deaths of Petra and friend- and, uh, 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 That's just fu- that's- You fucked up. He's pushing you to this intentionally. Very sane. Oh, he just uh, admits it. Satella? Satella? Oh, after all, you've met her. Oh, 
Oh, I'll just become not a human anymore. It'll be great. I will make you like me. Wow, Roswell's really becoming mid-villain. He's trying to change it. Uh, 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 I can't save it. I can't stop it. Cruelty. Damn, I hate that. Damn, I hate that. The only one. No, he loves you, bro. You're the best. Fuck. Truly. What is going on? Oh, just freaking the fuck out. Yeah, good. Vibe. What a thing to say. What a... Uh, the door opening again? What the fuck? That was so spooky? What the hell? Oh, oh man, you can't run from that. How much worse can we get? Can we get some bunnies to eat us now? Like, what the fuck? I don't know, man. Roswell just ruined everything. It was great. It was great. Yes, Otto. Friends! The hero that we need! Hello! <laughs> He's doing a sales pitch. You're fucked up, buddy. We gotta figure you out. Eh. Yeah. Friends. What are friends for, man? Maybe help, maybe lean on people who like you, who have quick wits and are cool. The thinking part, bro. And he's doing the psycho prep. <sighs> we don't have all the time in the world. Come on, man. Deep breaths. Take care of yourself. Like a real person. Then he stabs him. Oh, fuck. Let me see you grit those teeth. You stupid idiot. Just be a person. Huh? Oh, you're so cool, Otto. So cool. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. So overwhelmed. Okay, 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 okay. Biggest, broadest stroke. Satella? Good? Echidna? Eh? Most of the witches? 
eh, they're just, they're, they're gods. They're not like us. It's not, it doesn't work that way. It's not like they're, like, good. They are kind of on our side, though. They are supporting us. They're in our corner a little bit. Roswell, bad. <laughs> I was willing to give Roswell some benefit of the doubt for, like, I'm gonna beat you up so that my passions can come true and the desires in the real world becomes the real world and all that jazz. And my future me will live through it and I won't. It'll all be fine and, and hunky-dory. I was, like, willing to let that slide, Roswell. But the, like, I've been tormented and experienced a lot of struggle and I'm also insane. And so I'm going to make sure that you become the right kind of insane in order to become the tool that I need to foster the world that I desire. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Hold on, man. I don't like very much. <laughs> Feels kind of like, hey, let me just pass my trauma on to you so that you do the thing. That said, there's obviously so much nuance to it. There's so much, like, this 400-year-old character who apparently has been bewitched by eyes. I'm thinking Satella's, but I'm actually not sure. I guess it, no, wait, he's contracted with Echidna, though, right? Yeah. Okay, interesting. 400 years ago, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay. There are some logistical details that I'm not sure about around the Roswell part. That's an element that's adding to my confusion. Holy fuck, Echidna's crazy. Holy fuck, Satella's crazy, but in the most amazing way. Holy fuck, this has gotten really interesting. Holy fucking shit, Roswell sending the assassins himself is such a reveal. It makes me question, how long has Elsa been under his employ? We've been, like, fighting, dealing with them. He's, they've been attacking our house for forever. Was that all Roswell's doing? Wild. Also... Wasn't it some cult of the witch folks who showed up at Ram and Ram's village right before Roswell mysteriously and magically did in order to save them? That seems a little convenient. Kind of fucked up, maybe. I don't want to draw I'm not trying to draw lines where there aren't lines. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud in a, in a confused way because I'm fucking fucked. Oh. I have loved only you. And so he finds himself trapped in between them, one seeming totally reasonable and the other seeming totally unreasonable and both being crazy and insane and surrounded by so many monsters. And so he tries to throw it off and take all of the burden and put it upon himself. And he does that throughout the episode repeatedly. I mean, it's a trait that Subaru has had from the beginning. It's like, it's the, one of the scariest things that he has is like, everyone can suffer as long as, or like, I can suffer completely as long as it helps others. So they finally call him out. They finally call him out for the underlying selfishness and greed built into his desire for all of the pain. The self-flagellating, self-defeating nature of it must be nice to be you. And it hurts, it hits in so many angles and it hurts so much because it's like torn apart in so many ways. You can always make the excuse that you're suffering the most. And this like, this is a rocker, man. Ugh. Because I... I think a lot of people live this way. I've definitely felt the temptation to, to like, as long as I burden myself with the most, the most of the pain, I can feel, I don't know, I can feel something like that and, and feel the most, I don't know, the most like a tragic hero. That's exactly what it is. Even on like little things, it's like, pursue... Uh, persecute yourself in order to be able to play the villain or to be able to play the victim um or like taking on like in yeah uh, i've got this weird vibe of like households that i've been in where one person sometimes me will take on all of the responsibility for all of the household like cleaning up and everything and then we'll get really frustrated about that like i'm the only one taking on all the responsibility but they're the one taking on that responsibility it sometimes feels like it's trying to be, seek out ways to be more tragic. The only one who needs to suffer is me. That's cowardly. And the world gets rocked by that Dutch, Dutch, Dutch. But it's also ungrateful to her. Satella, the one who everyone has called vile and vile and vile, who's been kept out of this arrives at this conversation and is actually welcomed by the other witches. 
She brings a cloud of darkness, and her demeanor is scary. But she's not rejected by all of them. And she, in her actions and behavior, is not cruel or evil or deceitful. In fact, just like all the others seem somewhat like their opposites, Satella seems generous. Not envious at all. So in a cackling breakdown, Subaru says that all of this is foisted upon him. All this pain is caused to him. How cruel of you. And then takes this responsibility. Who else but me would have done all of these things? And finally, we hear her for real. It's not that she doesn't want to be hurt. It's that she doesn't want you to. This painful power, this authority she's given you is the chance to try again and hurt less. The fact that it hurts in the interim is incidental. The gift of life that each of us has been given, the ability to suffer and grow from it, is not a curse to force us to suffer, but a gift to enable us to try again the next day. What a terrible thing it is to curse the sky. The ones who've given us that ability to change and grow, to feel and suffer. Perhaps their goal, if they have one, is to give us a road forward. Not to cause us more pain. Desperate for me to love you? No. Desperate for you to learn to love yourself. How many lives will you have to live, Natsuki Subaru, before you realize that you can be cared about? Before you realize that you have to be one of the people who you save? That your spirit is included in their number? You gave me this ability. And that's why. And he's just deflated. This is all I have. My own life to be thrown away. As long as I hurt more. And protect them. I'll prevent their suffering. But we just realized. We just learned that it doesn't work that way. It may not. I'm useless. So maybe I can be useful for this. At least I can be burned. And we see we flash through all these deaths again and these sacrifices, these moments. It's for everyone else to make it to the future. It's not for me. As we can start tomorrow without losing anyone. But what about you? And we just saw that. Would that be the tomorrow for them that you would want? One without you? This finally undercuts suicide. Finally. And it does it in a sneaky way by telling us that it's a mystery whether those realities exist in other timelines or not. We leave it up to Subaru. He can't treat it like they don't exist. He has to treat it as though when he sacrifices himself, there will be an Amelia that lives on without him. And we've seen what that can become. He has to include himself in that number. And so finally, 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 the reset, just reset, no longer works. It did up to this point. It was perfectly valid and great and wonderful up to this point, And now it doesn't. Stand by in every way at every moment, believing and, and would in his circumstances choose to reset every time that I've said that I would. And then I'd regret it now, but I wouldn't have known. I think this should, because it's very carefully constructed, I think this should deeply speak to people who struggle with and consider suicide in the real world. Because this show is a good mirror to reality. Because waking up every day and suffering and feeling like you could just take yourself out of it is mirrored so well here. And because 
well, it's not a healthy thing to keep you alive. Sometimes the only thing that can is the remembrance that you'll be leaving other people behind and that they don't want you to be gone. For Subaru, that's what makes it land. He flips back. If only I had sacrificed myself more, I could have prevented all this suffering. But he's spinning up against a wall. It's like he's not making mental progress anymore, really. And he finally comes up to the truth. He doesn't want to lose anyone else. And that's when we can call him out. A lonely little child. Who made you cry? But it's Satella who, with love, that he doesn't want and can't accept. Satella who says, you saved me. And he chooses to die again here. And this catapults another group into fighting each other. She holds up a, a, a hard line. It's not allowed no matter what. But others refuse to allow her to hold that line. They enable his euthanasia. They enable him to end his own suffering here. But that's when she can say this. Why haven't you realized that you should be included? No matter what I believe, no matter what I wish for, I... Show me how awesome you can be. Thank you. Thank you. No matter what, I don't want to die. And so his wish is granted by a witch. Back to life. Can I really believe that the people that I like also like me? Isn't it, isn't it just that it's something that I do for them? Isn't it just what they can take from me? What I can give to them? They don't like me. I mean, I am capable of liking other people just for who they are. I'm capable of looking at Amelia and going, even if you're suffering and even if you're not capable of like bringing a lot to the table, I still love you and care about you. But nobody could ever turn that same kind of compassionate lens toward me. If I'm not bringing something to the table and contributing, I'm going to get rejected again and again and again and again. Clouds. But what if? What if? What if you're just a person and other people are just people and they're capable of liking you for who you are? What if you don't have to bear the entire weight of the world? What if other people do want you to be saved? Truly. Each of them steps in in their own ways. Truly interesting indeed. So he faces them down for real. Who they are, what they are. And instead of brushing off this offer, he refuses it with care. I will not make those sacrifices. And he knows that he's taking a worse path, probably. Right? More sacrifice and no guarantee of going to the right future. But that's what it means to live. Maybe, even though I don't know if I can believe in it, maybe I can be worth more than my death. A path lined with thorns indeed. Because as hard as it is, it's easy to destroy yourself and sacrifice yourself like that. To bash yourself up against a wall and then, 
and then claim to be the most hurt after destroying yourself, right? I'm the victim of what? Of fighting too hard. Okay. But what if you tried a different way? A way that saved you too. A way that wasn't like that. A way that was harder. I think I needed to hear this. It's not going to compute for me completely. Not for a long time, I don't think. But ever since Cyberpunk Edge Runners, I've been stuck because that was the mode that I got to. And I've been relearning to like be kind to myself and take the time that I need and to to live and to not just sacrifice of myself. Yeah? Because that's what cyberpunk is a lot about. It's like tearing yourself apart to become the hero that that is needed. To make it across the finish line, even if you skid in smoking. And this, this is like, we've run up against that enough. There has to be a way to live each day and each rebirth in a way that includes you, that includes me, that says I'm a person and I'm allowed to be, and I don't want to live in a world where what it means to be a hero is to be destroyed. I want to live in a world where heroes have friends and support and other heroes around them. I want to wake up again each day and try hard enough but not have to be destroyed for it. Because I know that the people around me, the ones who I would destroy myself for, actually don't want that for me. And because I know that if I were to destroy myself, I wouldn't be able to do more or live on. Roswell. Roswell is willing to to break it all in order to reach that goal at the end game. But that's not the way. That sacrifice is too much. It sacrifices reality and humanity. And humanity. It throws it all away in order to, to reach the goal. It uses yourself as a means to an end. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Fundamentally, it is wrong. I believe to use other human beings, other people, as means to an end. People are ends in themselves. And you are included in that number. I talk a lot about self-sacrifice and how valuable it is. We've talked about it a lot in this show. But there's an edge, there's a line that Subaru crosses often. And it's like, where's that line? And we haven't been able to put a finger on it. Where's the line where Subaru goes from being valuably self-sacrificing to destructive? Where is it? And it's not like a particular thing or a particular amount of self-sacrifice. It's the tone of it. It's the way of it. And it's included in the self-death, too. It's when he uses himself as a means to an end. He disrespects his own humanity and sees himself only as a tool for achieving things on a global perspective or for others or for the rest of the world. And he doesn't account for his own person his own personhood, his own inalienable right to be. He could sacrifice himself, and there are moments when he sacrifices himself where it's not like that, not quite, where it's like in, it's an end in and of itself, and he's, he's like, he knows that he'll return, he believes it, and he'll like, he's, gonna, he's trying, and he's, he's got the right motivation. I feel like him on the cliff is like that. It's like, this is too much, and I can save these people and myself and all of it. I believe but there have been times when it's not like that. That is the line for me for Subaru. And it's the line for me for myself too, that I have to recognize and that we all have to recognize. You're of value and you have to treat yourself as though you are of value. Even if you don't believe it, believe it. You can't just tear chunks out of yourself to feed the village. You're a part of the village and you have to heal and rebuild and take time. Fuck.
She tells us about Garfield, and we say our goodbyes. Is return by death an option available? You'll be all right. And finally, with a brave face, he can take the hand of one of the witches and receive real, real wisdom. Don't forget that there are people who grieve when you die. And then we drop a bombshell. One day you must come to kill me. And his promise is to save her. And they might be the same damn thing. Otto's amazing. Patrosh is cute. It hits so hard. The little, the little insta cry is like the bomb diggity dog. We're rejected from the trial because we rejected Echidna's offer. What is the makeup tattoo it takes him from his like e to being real serious i don't know i haven't clocked it before and i'm really fucking curious on the other side sharpening your resolve i thought perhaps i could see it but you're not there yet and so like beating him before we realized that roswell has been trying to corner you and manipulate you to make you the kind of monster who would trample on Amelia's will. Because what it means to love someone, says Roswell, is to do what they need even if they don't want it. And that sounds to me like our next conundrum, doesn't it? A child is not capable. You must choose hell. And he is that fully manic, eyes wide, seeing only the end. So long as there is a future, there is hope. It matters not what kind or horror of future we're in. All we need is one possibility. It doesn't matter to me if all of humanity is sacrificed as long as one option carries forward. That is what this speaks to. One pair that I believe in. You disappoint me again. So he reveals that it was his own order. And it is destroying us. It is to destroy us. It is cruelty. Not for the sake of cruelty. But for an end that Roswell believes. Outweighs everything else. Enough that he will force it all upon him. And even in the face of that being impossible, he just pushes you and pushes you. Subaru came out of the trial ready to go. And the one last thing he had to do rocked him again. Now that he has an idea of how he wants to be, he can really come face to face with a man who embodies everything that is its opposite. And despite having goals that might be aligned, our mentor in some sense and superior in much knowledge and age and wisdom and power is now perhaps our enemy. For it seems that the witches who were our enemies may actually be our ally. And this world may be far more mysterious and complicated than we even knew. And we knew! Fuck. That was really good. Thanks so much for watching it, guys. I don't feel like I did really well, but I'm gonna do my best to figure it out over the course of the week and stuff. Hit me in the comments with shit that I got wrong or shit that you want to flesh out more or talk about. Or just shit that you find really interesting. There are a lot of nuanced pieces of dialogue and moments in this episode and the last two episodes that have been, like, really nuanced and interesting. Especially if you want to tie them together with stuff that happened in the last couple episodes because I'm not always able to tie shit together. That would be super dope and I'd really appreciate it and we can talk about it all in comment spotlight next time. For now, I'm gonna sign out because that was my brain is fried thank you so much for watching this show with me it's a lot we will talk about it a lot more as we move forward i love you be kind to yourself you are not just a means to an end you're a whole person and don't sacrifice of yourself so much that there's no self left something that i need to hear and learn too it's interesting that it comes to me after I've been taking some time for myself. 
to rest and recuperate. It feels like a reinforcement that that's the right thing to do. And I am very appreciative of it. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for your patience. I'll see you next week for more ReZero. Much love. Peace.